I look near him. What he look like? Who is Alex Nairn? Downtown time or ordinary person? He's just a pretty ordinary guy in 2012 with Down syndrome. He's 25 years old and he's lived his entire life with a label. But Alex Nedden wants people to know there's so much more to him. Hi, Mum and Dad. Hi, the girl. No, it's a B.I. Yeah, so beautiful talkie. You can work. <laughs> Right from the start, his parents were determined he would go out in the world, just like their other two children. Get out here. I'm not married. We've just been really honest with Alex. And, um, you know, when, when him and his brothers, you know, when he said, why have I got Down syndrome? I don't like it. Well, Al, tough, because that's what it, that's how God made you. Now the answer is, your baby got down syndrome. Now, down syndrome, okay, that I look like. <laughs> but at the same time, there's that harshness, but there's also, we'll listen and we'll help you through this. We'll figure this out for you, you know? We'll help you through it. But we've just been really, really honest with him um, and have had really high expectations Always. Every step of the way, there was love and support, and always a plan. Our family, my heart, Gary and I, have had a very clear vision for Alex since we, since he was a very small baby. And if it's one thing that that, I'm so glad we did. That we knew where we were going, and it was this is where we were going, where Alex wasn't dependent on us. So Alex has not just one job, but four. All different, all for one day a week. Hello, my dear. There you go, there you go, mate. Yeah. Good. Are you ready? Yes. Have you had breakfast? Yes. Have you had breakfast? Yes. Have banana? Yes. Good on you. Get, grab your gear and we're going. Fine. Well, uh, and my mind too. Your mind too, OK. What about your lunch? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. It's Tuesday. So it's filing at Dad's office. 41 is at the top. Well, that's wrong. Alex has got a system for everything. 19, 24, 16. I look at the numbers, then I look in there. Then I look for the numbers in there, in the boxes. Yeah, who else can know the routines and the names and, you know, you, of what happens in four different offices? It's now 10 or 8 a.m. My first break, hot chocolate. Gail. How my dad? 10 o'clock. That's right. What's in there? Hot chocolate. As usual. Every morning it's hot chocolate. Or every Tuesday morning, isn't it? Yes. And you're some of the cake mum made you, or it, made for all us the other day? For Sunday night. Sunday night. Where did you invent 
Oh, here you can go and put that on the table. Just hold it really carefully, though, at the top. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alex has moved out of home now. He's flatting, and family get-togethers are special. <laughs> it's just what his mother always planned for. But she admits 25 years ago, there was a narrow view of what life would be like for kids like Alex. The images I had, what I had seen and grown up with, of people with Down syndrome, were very outdated. He was never going to wear Roman sandals, and he was never going to have a bald haircut. They were the two things then that I'd thought of. Here you go, big girl. Mm. Thanks, Mummy. You're welcome. Mm. You're spoiled. He's not spoiled. <laughs> 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 they will think you're spoiled, Harley. Are you spoiled? No, Mum. You're not, eh? <laughs> he was going to know the world around him. He was going to live in a community that knew him and he knew them. The towels and the sheets, eh? Hey, like... mm. Whoever he was going to be, then we were going to give him every opportunity to do that. Enrolling Alex in a primary school was the first of many battles for the family. Despite some fine words, Alex's local school rejected him. They said they didn't have the resources to teach him. The hard times were always rejection. When I saw in people's face, when they just outright rejected Alex. Whether that was at school, um, and rejection comes in many um, guises, adults thought they were doing the right thing. You know, when he got rejected from kindergarten, when he got expelled at, at three, um, that was, that was hard. That was really hard. We put together, or it contains all, everything, the whole history of from beginning to end of the story of getting Alex into school, essentially. What's in there? We have got the Education Act. I mean, how many families have got the Education Act? Man, we were determined. We were determined to make sure Alex had a damn good education. Sacred Heart College. Alex was the fourth of four generations to go here. Everyone said my name. And, and everyone says, Alex, 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 Alex. There were good times. There were times when it was really difficult. Do you miss school? How <laughs> I say it. Yes. What do you miss about it? Do this now. Like he had some really good years there, and there were times where it was very, very difficult. When he got to about 14, and we knew he was really um, lonely, or well, he was 14 or 15, and he really was lonely, and because kids didn't, the boys, they didn't. Well, one of the boys said to me, I don't know how to be his friend anymore. When I was 14 years old, when I am at school, in my school days, someone teasing and bullying me. And then after that, I go to my room. I say a prayer or talking to God. And I, and I, got, I got the answer. And God said, Forgive people. The first time? Do you yeah. talk about the first yeah. time? What happened? Mm. Bridget and Gary recognised they needed help. 
Building an ordinary life for Alex was going to take more than just her own resources. OK, she was a group. What happened? <laughs> Long fast talk. They came up with the circle of support. A group of friends and professionals who shaped a pathway for Alex and gave advice. There's that old platitude about it takes a whole village. This actually puts that um, village into practice. Now they had a giant plan that would guide Alex into work and a life away from home. If I look back, it has taken not just me, it's taken my husband, my family, my, my, other, you know, my other children, huge efforts to make sure that the most vulnerable member of our family um, enjoyed everything in life, which is why we put um, that circle of supporters around us, because we couldn't do it. We, and we're a strong, resilient family. So every decision that we made, whether you know, big or small, they were very intentional um, because it impacted the decisions that we made today would impact on what happened tomorrow for him. Anyone who knows Alex can expect a regular phone call, always on the same day at the same time. You can set your watch by it. Hello, it's Tanya speaking. Hello, Tanya. It's Alex speaking. Oh, hi, Alex. How are you? Good, thank you. And you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Now. Yeah. OK. Hello, it's Alex speaking. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good, thank you. Speaking. Hello, Marie. It's Alex speaking. Hi, Alex speaking. Hi. Okay. okay. Routine is really important to him. Really important. Oh, it always has been. Try and get him out of the routine to, you know, we've always been, tried to put in things to get him to be flexible. So we'll change, we've intentionally changed routines for him along the way as, as he was growing up. Now he can very much control his own life by his own routines and if he if I ring up and say Alexi what are you doing this afternoon say Saturday afternoon no I can't come over mum because I've got to go up to the supermarket at four o'clock and before that I'm watching my um, DVD and then so it's very you know he's, he's he knows exactly what he's doing it's Friday, so it's off to Drake recruitment. The bus list. Emails. Friday, so I work here for a week. I do other work here. Got a celebration today for five years of working with the company. Alex. Five years ago, when Alex used to come out and work, he would have um, someone come along to help with him and work with him. And now, no longer, Alex comes to, along to work on his own, doesn't need to have a support worker or someone just guiding him and helping him, because he can do that all on his own when he gets into the computer and updates our records for a lot of the data that needs to be in for our candidates, delivers our mail, and does a lot of admin work for us. This was his first job, and people here have been committed to him. Five years later, he's seen as an asset. And there's just a card from all of us, so a really big thank you, Alex. Well done. Thank you, Kay. And thank you for Sweet New Zealand. For five years. I like having fun everywhere I go. And it is fun to work here. And I would like to say a prayer for the morning tea. Yep. <coughs> Come to see the Lord Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, as we are together of this celebration here this morning, of this morning tea, the good, every fifth years ago, Amen. Now for the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Every Thursday, Alex volunteers at the Catholic Diocese. He has a deep commitment to his faith. This is the bishop's place, house of God. When you come in, respect and respect our workers and respect our bishop of Auckland here. This is the one place where no one judges him or labels him. Do not judge others so that God will not judge you. What do you think that actually means? What does it say to you? Like people dancing me about Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. But that's not okay for them to do that. Don't judge off disabled people. Just being themselves and being myself and everyone's else. Truth be told, He'd quite like to join the clergy. That's something to work on. There's no denying Alex has a very strong relationship with God. He loves icons, Christian icons. We then, I then noticed he started praying at 12 o'clock every day and he would have these prayers. And then, before I knew it, then I decided that this is, is this... OCD because of my own ignorance. It didn't take long before, you know, Alex's soul isn't disabled. So why wouldn't he? Why, you know, what if I called it, even thought about it in those terms of OCD if it had been my other children? No, I wouldn't have. On the fourth day, Alex works at a local food bank, part of his commitment to others. Hello, how are you doing? Alex, hey, how are you? I'm fine. Did it really get you work today? Yeah. yeah. It's about caring for people. That's why. Now, you're going to read the list. Two big things. Good morning, food bank, Alex speaking. Chocolate. Do you remember the chocolate is? Down there. Okay, so we need, there's four children, two adults. We need six bars of chocolate. Got it. Got it. Go. Yummy for chocolate. Uh, this box I do the... The weight left in there too. Oof, all done. Alex has lived most of his life in Rimuera. Everyone knows him here, down to the way he takes his hot chocolate. Good, thank you. What would you like today? Usual? Hot chocolate? Okay. One of Alex's long-term goals, to be just like everyone else, was to go flatting. Thanks. Finding the right flat in the right area was a big ask. It didn't seem right to take Alex away from all these relationships that he had built up with neighbours and um, the shopkeepers and just his routines that m made him feel safe. Hello. How are you, mate? Good, thanks. Doing well? Yeah. Alex is quite famous here uh, with the shopkeepers and also with the uh, people in the oh. area, so they all know him and see him uh, yeah. at least once a week. But finding Alex a flat in Rumuera was proving tricky. Bridget came up with an original plan. One Saturday I said to Gary, you know, I think that we need to give Alex what, what um, the house and we need to go and find a flat. <laughs> so, and for both Gary and I, it was like the light went on. It's exactly what we needed to do. 
and it felt so right. The fear of him being 50 and me being 80 and we're still living together, you know, was also set behind creating a vision for him. Enter Sarah, Alex's personal assistant. Sarah is employed for five hours a week, assisting Alex. This is Sarah Margaret Ferrance. <laughs> it's my BA for my flat, yeah. And it's my family friend for a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we we uh, meet up every now and then and, and talk about stuff that's going on in Alex's life. And, and um, I helped him set up this flat and find flatmates. When I said to her, I should say, where are you going to find flatmates? And she said, oh, Bridget, you're going to find them on Trade Me. And I thought, oh, my God. You know, that was just... She said, Bridget, that's where everyone finds flatmates. I don't want caregivers to look after. He said, Mum, I know I need support to help me with some things. And I said, yes, that's right. He right. said, but I don't want caregivers. Um, what are we having? Veggie soup? Yep, OK. Can my flatmates help me with some things? So that's what we've done. She found three fantastic flatmates. Um, and, uh, you know, we couldn't have been more blessed. Um, did you sleep in this morning, Alex? Yeah. yeah, I knew because all the blinds weren't um, open when I woke up at about 11. Yes. What are no. you doing? Well, not too late, like, like 11. 11. Not too late. Okay. This Friday, I'm, I'm out for dinner this Friday night. Oh, yeah. Who are we going for dinner with? With Mitchell and Tim oh, and cool. my other friend. Are we invited? I want to see Tim. Or is it boys only? It's always boys only. <laughs> the deal was just a room each. Um, we like discussed prices, and they introduced us to Alex, and we were happy. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. Everything worked out really well, and we moved. I moved up like a week later. It's good. Like Alex, I think has a lot of freedom, like living away from his parents mm. and stuff. Like he makes. Really like all his own choices and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, he's really independent. He's just the same as us. We all go to work every day, mm. have dinner every night. He's got all his transport organised, or he'll get a taxi. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's get this in here. Alex living in his arrangement. Oh, we're just so proud of him. Carry that for you. Good morning, it's Nathan Alex speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 But it was, wasn't an idea that came up over the past sort of year or so. Oh, nice. Man. That's great, Alan. This was the vision that we had for him when he was, you know, a few months old. That um, he was going to leave home just at 25. By the time he was 25, just like the other two. Alex, did you get my text today? Why? You never replied. Too busy. Too busy. <laughs> And everything we've done over the past 24 years has been about, um, in the early years, building community up around him, um, where people really know him, where um, he's comfortable. Um, yeah, and we're, we're just that real strong sense of belonging. And he really had that at school. He had it, has it in his church. He has it just in, in the community. So... Him, him living where he is now, where he has grown up, is just such a natural um, progression. It's where we want him to be, um, living independently from us. Does Mum still try and control your life? Yes, on Skype. How many times does she call a day? 
<sighs> Every day, no stop. <laughs> well, it's Monday to Sunday. Because, you see, I was, Alex, what I felt really bad, because I wasn't calling you every day. So then I started to think, gosh, I should really call him every day, even though I don't call any of my children every day. I was going to say, at least you get phone calls, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't. Would I have him back here tomorrow? Um, no. Not unless he really wants to come back home. What would you tell people who had a child with a disability? And I said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, and I think that's just so important. Don't be afraid of the future. Just grab the future and run with it and do as much as possible with your children. You know, introduce them to the mainstream, Let's give them as much opportunity as everyone else, you know, and just see what happens. I don't think he's anything... I mean, he's my son, of course, I think he's pretty damn special, but actually, it's what we expect in 2012.